And when you were younger and you were like, okay, I want to go pro, were they just like, okay, or? Yeah, full support. Full it support. Was actually so insane. Like, I'm so grateful for my parents. Um, they would drive me up and down the mountain. It was like 40 minutes away in New Zealand. Um, and take me back down for like the last hour of school or whatever, make sure I get in just like a little bit of education. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you really, it's been really awesome to have a good support system. And mm -hmm. yeah, my parents are the best. Yeah, I feel <laughs> like my dad, my parents and I, we kind of learned together. They knew nothing about snowboarding, snow sports in general. So we kind of learned as we went. Um, so like even when I went pro, we didn't know that like I was pro yeah. or anything. We You're didn't just even doing what you love. So we were just kind of like happy to be there, you know, mm -hmm. just like enjoying the ride. And um, it's crazy how, how far we've come, but dad definitely gets pretty nervous when he watches me drop in every run. He's like, are you good? Are you okay? Like, does anything hurt? Do you need anything? Um, but I just love having their support, which is why I always bring them with me to every contest I go to, because it's just nice having them around, little piece of home. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we are live from the Winter X Games Aspen, and it is looking beautiful out there. Hey, Danny. It's glorious. We're here, Colorado. Vibes are high. How you doing, dude? You're looking like um, the purple people eater. <laughs> I am purple people eater, man. I'm trying out this new color. Full purple. Yeah, the hat. Does it match? No. You're Matt. No. Brittany, you say so. <laughs> How are you, Brittany? I'm good. How you doing, Dingo? Man, I could not be better. We have two of my favorite snowboarders in the world, two superstars in the world to kick off Winter X Games. And we've got Chloe Kim and Zoe Sadowski Sinnett. Zoe, I've been uh, I've been hanging out with your dad this weekend and okay. now I really know I've got to I've got to get the full I I, I got to meet, meet Chloe's dad many, 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 many years ago. But now it's full circle for me, and I I, I, I know why you are the way you are. Yeah. And I can say that sure. I'm a better person for it now. Girls, how are we? We're doing well. Happy to be here. Yeah. So I, I, I can, I got a list in front of me, and I can start here by some achievements. Zoe, nine X Games medals, five gold, three silver, one bronze, uh, one gold medal at Olympics, bronze medal at Olympics. Um, and then, no, wait, how many gold medals at the Olympics? You have two? No, I've got one. You've got one and a bronze. And a silver. And a silver. And then down here, Chloe, you have six X Games gold medals, two Olympic gold medals, uh, and you've won everything from the Tonys, the SPs, and you two are like everything. basically everything. Everything. Two of the most celebrated girls in snowboarding, one hot pot, one slope style, one from New Zealand, and one from the Bay Area. Girls, did we ever think that we'd be sitting here in, 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 in this achieved uh, by such a young age? No, Chloe? Definitely not, no, but super grateful for sure. Uh, let's take it back from the beginning, Chloe. I remember, I, I can't remember if it was the first time we met, but it was, it was around 2016, maybe-ish, 15-ish. Maybe I met there when you were younger, but it was when we had the Monster Airbag and it was, we were snowboarding with Steve Aoki. Yes, that was the first time we met. That was the first time we met, yes. right? I was there also, I do remember that. Yeah. Because I remember you hitting the bag and then Steve being like, hey, I'm gonna try a flip. We're like, well, you have to make it to the bag. <laughs> I think he did it though, right? Yeah, he, he ended did. up doing it yeah, on did. snow, right? On yeah, he's snow. done backflips on snow now. Yeah. Wild guy. Love him though. Chloe, let's jump into it. You have, uh, you, you, you're freshly back. You're back on snow. You took a year off. I mean, you were probably still snowboarding a little bit, I would say, but a year off from competitive, a year set back from the scene. How you feeling? I feel really good. Um, super excited to be back. I think that taking that time away was super. It was just really good for me. I was able to kind of reset and um, kind of give myself space to grow as a person as well and uh, kind of get my priorities back straight. And now I know, you know, I'm here because I want to be here. And I think that's all I needed to know. Yeah. And at the end of the day, you know, Danny, you've been through this. You've been through, you know, the, the Olympics. You've been through the highs and the lows of what happens and what doesn't happen. It's, it's important to take time to yourself. Oh, so much. And I think it's like really important to like actually take time away from competitive side or switch to a different focus in snowboarding and then like come back to a half pipe or slope style and be like, holy shit, I'm so good at this. Like this feels really good. 
Whereas, you know, it's like a struggle to do things like school where you're like practicing how to remember things again, you know? Yeah, that's not easy. School it's not, not easy. easy. <laughs> and then you, Zoe, how are you doing this year? Um, I'm pretty good, like mentally, not quite physically at the moment. Had a bit of an injury uh, in December at the Copper World Cup. So sadly, I'm not competing this year, which really sucks, but still happy because I'm the biggest fan of snowboarding. Can't wait to watch everyone rip it. Watch Chloe get back in the pipe at X Games. It's going to be sick. The level of um, competitive slope style riding on the females is at such a new level, I think, in the last couple years. You know, I, I think there, Jamie Anderson maybe stood out on her, her own for like some time. But now you look and there's Tess and Kokomo and 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 uh, Mia and Annika and Anna and I like for the like I am very excited for not just this weekend but the future of of where like women's slope style riding is going and it's it's one of those it's one of those things you watch now and I mean Kokomo's level is is has been stepping it up I mean we were briefly talking about it last night in the hotel room. I mean, w w w it, 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 where is this going to end or is this just keep going for her? Um, I don't think it's going to end. It's like there's a, the only way is up. And um, I think we'll see it here this weekend. All the girls have been working so hard and it's going to be crazy to see. Um, you know, there's five girls now that with the potential to do a 14, potential to do a 14 in slope style. So, yeah, I'm excited to watch. And do you have any favourites right now? That's a hard question. I do have favourites, but I don't want to say. Of course, I'm going to say my monster teammates. Um, and Tess from across the ditch, for sure. But Kokomo, yeah, she's ripping pretty hard at the moment. But honestly, all the girls have such big repertoires and all have the potential to get on the podium. So I'm just excited to watch how everything comes together. And then what about you, Chloe? You kind of stepped out of the, the limelight for a year. Is it, was it hard coming back into it? Um, it's kind of like muscle memory for me. I think I was able to figure it out pretty quickly, but I, you know, competition definitely is pretty strong. All the girls are killing it. Um, and it's just really cool to be part of that progression. I think, you know, women's half pipe snowboarding is not where it used to be. Um, so many girls from all over the world just completely throwing down. And I think you guys will be able to see that tomorrow night. So guys, I have a video here that I'm going to roll of uh, both the girls here. Um, it's going to roll on our screen. Dive it in right now. Da -ba bang. And um, this is just some highlight reel of both you girls right now. It's uh, you on screen. Chloe, if just some of your X Games moments. Do you have some of what year, like what, what, what year was your first X Games and what's the difference now from then to now? My first X Games was in 2014. I was 13 years old. I actually got silver that year, which was a big deal. Um, I remember getting my X Games invite that year. Actually, it was right after due tour, and I was screaming in the car, so excited. It was a dream come true for me. Um, so it's kind of surreal, you know? I've been coming to this event for almost 10 years. That's crazy to think about. Mm -hmm. How long have you been coming to this event, Danny? Uh, well, I competed like 13 years straight. And then I think I took two years off from not competing to then. Now this is my fifth year as a full-on spectator and just fan. And then we're going to jump into some clips here of you, Zoe. What was your first year at X Games? Um, my first year at X Games was 2019. I was 17 years old and I actually got invited in Big Air, but it was alternate and slope style. And then, yeah, I, I guess a couple of the girls got hurt and I, I got the spot for slope and managed to win that year, which was crazy. <laughs> so so crazy looking back on. And yeah, I've just been so grateful to be able to come back every year and compete in Aspen because it's the best event of the year. We also have some backcountry footage that just popped up on screen there and, and you're no stranger to backcountry. What, what's the difference for you of being able to jump from a, a, a venue like this and then go and compete at, say, say, like a natural selection? Yeah, for sure. I mean, um, like every snowboarder, I love riding cow so much. And so any chance I'll get, I'll, I'll be out there. And um, yeah, I guess the difference between competing in, in slope style and then in the backcountry is like, 
you kind of have so much freedom in say events like natural selection and you just got to figure it out whereas you show up to an event like x games and you're like i want to do a 1260 here this is my goal um and you know what the the jump's like and you practice on it and then you just have to perform when the time comes but yeah in natural selection you kind of drop in and kind of have to take everything as it comes you know like it's quite it's quite unexpected growing up in new zealand who were some of your idols or who did you look up to um, for me, growing up in New Zealand snowboarding, um, my idols were the likes of Steffi Luxton and Christy Pryor, um, Mitch Brown, who now coaches for the New Zealand team. I mean, I used we... to compete against Mitch in Junior Worlds when no we were kids. Way. Yeah, Sick. Mitch was like one of the first kids I ever saw like have like a full spray, sp full page spread in a magazine. No I think way. it was Volcom. Damn, that's sick. I love seeing that, and 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 this kind of comes into you too. You know, Danny, you're now the head coach of the U.S. Uh, snowboard half -bite team. And you see people that you grew up with, you had a full career in snowboarding, um, obviously with your accolades at X Games and Olympics and doing your own thing with all the grenade movies that we did and, and, and then taking a little bit of time off, but now being able to come back and be a coach and be an onlooker, um, you, you know, and, 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 and you stand around and you look at the people now that are on top of the half pipe and you see a lot of the people that I guess you used to compete against. Uh, yeah, I mean, definitely see quite a few you know like i think as uh, an accomplished writer you kind of get to see like a few generations as you go through it where you're like whoa a couple people faded away and there's new faces and then some new faces and then now is like this next role of like getting to coach it's really cool because i had so many positive influences uh throughout my career that were like team managers and people that i got to snowboard with that like i really learned so much from as just like a snowboarder being taken care of to then be like, you know, I really want to do this for this next generation. And then as far as style goes, it's really fun to come back into it and be like influence riders within new tricks and new combos and like create that fun aspect as opposed to just like add another 180, add another 180, add another 180. It's like, no, try this with a different grab and like start to influence a little bit more of like training sessions as in like our old film shoot style, you know, or like backcountry jump kind of style. How do you think like X Games has changed over the time that since when you started to now? What, in what ways do you think? A lot more rotations. Uh, a lot more <laughs> rotations. I mean, going back to kind of like, you know, what Dingo and Zoe were talking about was in the progression of women's like slope style. There's tricks that like I didn't even dream about as a pro rider filming video parts that I'm watching like some of my favorite girl slope stylers doing mm -hmm. and it like blows my mind you know that that progression has like caught up and then surpassed where like we even really envisioned it being right um, I think just the elevation of these riders to the platform they're at is so cool it's like you know we were cracking into like what was superstars of America in a sense and now it's like the whole world's eyes are on these athletes and it's like influencing so many people in so many good ways across like the world. Mm -hmm. Like you see so many countries so involved in, in snowboarding and skiing now where you're like, wow, that was really cool. Because at that time when we were doing it, there was like a couple nations we would compete with on the regular, you know, and like at that time in half pipe, like Finland was all over the map where it was like all these amazing half pipe riders. And, now you see a lot of the Scandinavian movement kind of like in slope and in backcountry and stuff. And I feel like you really have to give credit to the riders because you're so talented, you work so hard, you're really trying to like bring it up. It makes more people interested. So the growth of it is just the talent of the riders. It's, it's you know, why they're watching because what are they going to do next? Chloe, growing up in the Bay Area, um, when, when, when did you start? Where did you first start snowboarding? Was it Mammoth or Big Bear? I started on Mountain High when oh I was Oh my four. god, I missed one. Yeah, Mountain the High. The closest one. I know, I know. Um, so many good mems there. Actually, so many like badass women came out of there. Haley Langland, Maddie Mastro, that's where I met them for the Are first time. Are you serious? Time. Yep. Mountain I never knew high. that. That's yeah. Crazy. Oh my god. It's so wild. Um, no hot pipe there. No. Well, they do have one. They do? Yeah. Just like not rideable. <laughs> just like a little just dirt not, ditch. Not 25 feet. High. There's like a little bit of transition and then ice blocks, so you actually can't even go up the walls. I mean, that's how I remember it being, but so many good memories there. And then when did you start going to Mammoth? I started going to Mammoth when I was 10, so I was a little late to the party, but um, also that's kind of when I decided that I loved half pipe snowboarding. 
Um, and I also loved slope at the time too. I think I competed in both till I was about 14. So I was kind of able to do both there and uh, Mammoth has such great, park, great parks and uh, yeah. What is uh, your favorite sport besides snowboarding? I think I think I know what you're gonna say. Yeah, uh, I just got a horse recently, so I love you know. <laughs> I knew she was gonna say horse riding. I had yeah. no idea what you were gonna say. Yeah. <laughs> so. How is your horse doing? He's good. Um, I was just telling Dingo earlier he got injured, so unfortunately he's in rehab in Temecula. Um, I need to go visit him soon, but he's so cute. And so I see that you you bring your dog along to hang out with the horse. What's the horse's name? Momo. Momo. Yes. What, what, who, who's, who's the leader of the pack, the dog or the horse? Definitely the dog. Um, they don't, well, my dog just doesn't like horses, so I don't know if they'll be able to hang out anytime soon. I've tried, but I just don't think they're going to get along. Uh, my horse is just so curious and wants to be friends so bad, but I'm scared that my dog's going to bite him. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to say my dog. Okay. It's the pack leader. What about your favorite sport? Uh, my besides favorite snowboarding. sport, besides snowboarding, is surfing. Sick. Yeah, I love surfing so much. And then close, close third is skating. I mean, I grew up skating and then I recently fell in love with surfing a couple of years ago and follow the tour, keep up with all the videos and stuff and just like watching the girls' progression in those sports has been so insane and gets me so hyped. Where's your favorite surf spot? Oh, I'm not telling you that. It's a ah! secret. Yeah, that's true. That's like the taboo <laughs> yeah. thing of surfing, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, is it pretty sharky in New Zealand? Um, yeah, it's for sure a little sharky. Um, it's pretty isolated. So when you go surfing down there, um, especially in the South Island, there aren't a ton of people around, which makes it super sick. But then you're also isolated and away from how, say, if like there's a shark in the water and stuff. So it's pretty scary stuff. For both you two, I mean, I, probably a little bit separately, but it, it, and it all kind of happened, you know, around the same time. I think you both have uh, had to deal with the limelight, but not just core industry limelight. You know, I think you've both dealt with the limelight on a very high level. How have, so with you, Chloe, ha, ha, how was that adjustment of being Chloe Kim the snowboarder to then Chloe Kim red carpet events, Chloe Kim face of Nike, Chloe Kim cover of all these magazines? How have you adjusted to that type of lifestyle? It was definitely a big adjustment in the beginning. Um, definitely wasn't expecting all of that um, from snowboarding, but now I see it as such an incredible opportunity to continue just spreading the love for snowboarding and um, getting people really into it. Because even when I am at all these events, on all these campaigns, like I'm Chloe Kim, the snowboarder, and I think that's so powerful. And I think um, I love that, you know, in doing those things, even though it's not directly like snowboarding, snowboarding, but I'm able to, you know, continue to share and spread, you know, what snowboarding's all about through these things. So I'm grateful for those opportunities for sure. What's one of the craziest events you've been to? Like, you're like, oh, what am I doing here? Or craziest outfit? Oh my gosh, I don't even know. Um, I mean, even like going to the ESPYs is so crazy because you're like hanging out with the most, you know, badass athletes in the world, just like sitting next to them. Um, I went to like this Elton John party recently that was pretty sick. Um, <laughs> it's just kind of wild. I definitely get imposter syndrome. Like, I feel like I shouldn't be there, but it's cool. The food's good. That's all I ask for. Yeah. <laughs> good hors d'oeuvres. I like what you said about you know, being Chloe Kim the snowboarder, right? There's, there's really something that says that that you are there, but you're there because of what you've done for your sport. And then put, being able to push your sport. And I think I, I think it's changed a lot. You know, I was there, watched Danny get his first Olympic silver medal, and that was when Ross Powers, Danny, JJ swept the podium. Correct if I'm wrong, it was the first podium sweep for the United States in 52 years. Something like that. 56 years, I think. Since 56 years, years, four years up. In the 50s. Not bad. We didn't even know what we had done. We were like, oh, wow, you did good. You did good. You did good. People were like, no, you guys like made history. We're like, yeah, but we did good. <laughs> you know, like that was, it's and snowboarding. And that's what like the, the coolest part about it is that we can reach these accolades. And none of us really started snowboarding thinking like, oh, I'm going to go party with Elton John one day. It was like, no, I'm going to go get on a helicopter in Alaska or I'm going to be living in Mammoth, you know? Or hanging out with George Bush. The coolest thing Danny ever did was he got George Bush to sign a George Bush bobblehead. No way. That's His insane. own bobblehead, yeah. 
at his house, the White House. <laughs> and I went through security with only a Sharpie and the bobblehead and the airport. It's kind of like airport security going through. They were just like all dying laughing. But I think it's been important over time to have those moments and to be able to keep pushing the sport and pushing the sport to limits. Um, YouTube being half pipe riders, uh, and, and you know, Danny, you were kind of the, the, the first person to link back to back 1080s. And at that time, it was such a huge step in a, in a where people were like, holy shit, like, what is, is where, where do we go from here? And now a back to back 1080 is not even going to get you into qualifying for any of it. Well, it depends on how big you go with those <laughs> 1080s. Um, but I think, you know, it was crazy to see a level where. It was like everyone kind of saw this ceiling. And for me, I was like, you know, like I just want to do good. So I'm going to do more. And then I remember going back to, after I landed like my first 1080, I went back to the US Open. And I was like, well, I kind of want to win again. And I don't think like that last run is going to do it in my mind. So I'm like, why not do two of them? And then people are like, what are you doing? <laughs> and now you look at like the level where it's like, holy shit. Like we're seeing back to back triple flips. We're seeing, I mean, there's been some history made over here at this table where uh, my spin count has been completely broken by Chloe in the last six months. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah. The thing I love about Chloe, too, is you go so big and you make it look so effortless. And the style you bring is like, it's, 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 like, it's like watching art being made. And it's, I think that it's awesome to watch you progress. And I hate it when you take time off because it's, it's not as fun without you in there. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> no, I, I think, um, I think like getting, as I've grown up and been, you know, doing all these contests and stuff, I kind of started seeing snowboarding as like, it's truly an art form. And everyone's writing is, you know, their own expression of art. And we use, you know, our boards and our grabs and our bodies as art. And I think that's, it's really cool. Even when you watch someone go down the groomers, like I can always tell who's riding just on how like where their hands are, like the way they're turning, you know, I could spot Zoe from a mile away if I just saw her ride down buttermilk. Right. And I think that's really cool. That is cool. Zoe, for you, um, after that Olympic medal, how was it going back to New Zealand? Um, it was pretty chill to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Straight after uh, winning the Olympics, I went straight to Baldface and competed in natural selection and kept my season going filming in the back country because, you know, COVID was around. They, we had crazy quarantine, um, like two weeks in a hotel. So, yeah, I didn't make it home until a couple months after. And by that point, everyone had forgotten about it. No, <laughs> that's a sick. lie. <laughs> I think you were the first in 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 that stature i think to bring home a gold medal to the country yeah yeah in the winter olympics it was it was pretty crazy to be honest like i looking back it's just mind-blowing like just like everyone's reaction and all the love from everyone back home and yeah I, it's, it's crazy to think about it's uh it's it's winter x games you know we're being i i remember coming here when you were competing right there there was no scaffolding there was no nothing I had a, a spray can and a stencil and I was walking around the bottom of the half pipe spray painting people with grenade logos mm. and uh, we used to we have we had our dog up here for a while. Oh yeah, Big Vern. Big, Big Vern, Vern was, was up here. Resident of X Games. But the evolution of this, it's 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 like no other. It's it's like the the the, the excitement around X Games. Brittany, this is your second X Games. This is my second X Games. You you came up to me and she said happy X. And I like that. Happy X Games. <laughs> happy X Games. I mean, yeah, happy X Games, everyone. This is cool. Yeah. This is from last year. We were at the limelight. This is. We stepped it up. I we, made some. I, we are I, live. You made I called some calls. It the I called it some favors. Yeah. This hey, is good. Hey, I, mean, I, know, I know some people. But what about you, Dingo? Because this is—you've probably been to more X Games than all of us. Probably. In a row. Yeah. Yeah, you're Mr. X Games. We can't even track you down. You text me back later, like two today. You're like, oh well. I Hi. think I brought you here at 15. I don't think you ever left. <laughs> we were trying to do the math with that with Brando and Craig McMorris the other day. Oh, somebody nearly just went down big time. It, 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 if I jump and yell, that's because it looks like ski practice is going on in the hot pipe directly behind us. And then to the left, you have either big air um, or slope style going on. That big air jump looks big, Zoe. Yeah, it's pretty huge. 70 plus feet, I heard. 
So if it's 70 plus feet, how far are you traveling? Um, I think 70 feet. I don't really know how it works. We do meters in New Zealand. You know, we have the metric <laughs> meters, system. Meters, yeah. Um, but it's a pretty big jump and the landing's super long. Um, so you can go really big. Uh, I know a couple of 18s went down on it yesterday. A couple of 14s from the girls were um, being thrown. So yeah, it's going to be pretty crazy. How do you know, like I, I used to commentate snowboard events and it was pretty simple because you didn't have to count all these spins. <laughs> How do you know, like, if you don't know, like, what I've been, I, I was watching the Larks Open, and if you don't know the athlete or the rider, mm. then, because if you know the rider, you kind of know what tricks they're going to do. Yeah. So it finds it easy. If you don't know the rider or the skier, you, you find it hard to calculate or watch. <laughs> do you guys have trouble watching yourselves? Ourselves? No, not yourself. Oh, oh. Watching other people. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. What, and counting the rotation. Yeah. yeah, I have no idea. Um, I mean, I know what a triple court looks like. And then if it's any more than that, I just guess. Yeah. 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 Based on like the reaction from yeah. the people around me, I'm like, oh, maybe that's never been done before. Yeah. Um, but it's so hard to count, especially watching skiers. I genuinely never yeah. know what they're doing. No. Yeah, the word never get never never get done before gets used a lot now. Yeah. Mm. And I think that's the progression. Do you guys at some point wish we could go, not backwards, but like just stay still for a minute? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <For sure. laughs> Man. Um, we're going to talk a little bit of predictions uh, here soon. Um, I predict you win gold. Same. That's my, that's my prediction. Um, I, 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 I don't really see it going any other way. So let's go to women's <laughs> snowboard slope style and let's, let's have some predictions right now. Oh, on... That's such a hard question. Chloe. What do you reckon? Uh, well, From you're, always, you're always my top pick Thanks. whenever your name is on the start list. I'm like, Zoe's got this. Like, whatever. I'm just going to wait till, you know, I get proven right. Um, but right now, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, Kokomo is killing it. That's for sure. Um, Tess, a fave. Um, I don't know. I just think I have no idea. Yeah, I have no idea either. Um, they're all my friends, so I can't really say kind one tough, person. Eh? Yeah. Um, damn, I could say so many things. Like Coco has done back-to-back -back 12s. She could bring it into the slope course, which would be insane. Um, Mia has the most insane rails ever and then can back it up with a 14. And I mean, she hasn't gotten an X Games medal yet and she, she's due for one for sure. So it's pretty hard. What's more important? Um, you know, obviously it starts with the rail line and then the jump line. What's what's more important um, in, in the run or is it something that all just kind of has to flow together? Definitely all has to come together. Um, just clean, fluid style, but also hitting those like, getting, uh, linking the tens with the nines or the twelves. Um, and yeah, just people adding their own individual flair to their runs as well. Like you see Jamie did that for so long and it was so exciting to watch her ride and that's why she always ended up on top and like yeah you kind of have to just piece the whole thing together it looked like this one here for especially this course because it is so crowded with rails like right up front where you have so many options how hard is it to like kind of pick a rail line that you feel like confident in getting you know like each oh. time where jumping you, you get to practice so many times but i feel yeah, like with rails sure. it's always such a bummer we like when there's like that little rail come off early and you're like oh yeah, for sure. It's so hard to pick a rail line, especially one that you think will be consistent enough to go on a run. And with this course this year, there's a lot of like transfers. So I think we'll be seeing a lot of people like going for those transfers and trying to get some sick tricks on them. But they're also harder, you know, like harder to make look good and find the flow. So yeah, I've seen a couple tricks go down uh, in practice the last couple of days. Um, so yeah, that'll be a that'll be a factor. Um, do you have a favorite like? Go to rail trick in your line that you know you're gonna get in like solid. Mine was a cab 270. Yeah. I was like, I could do I this on any too. gap to down or yeah. anything. Yeah, I love a back blunt too, to be honest. Like, just back feels one? so good. If back blunt too. Oh, there you go. Yeah. It's like, a 270 off. Yeah, wow. Yeah, yeah. If I'm riding and I'm not feeling great, if I do one of those, it'll just put me in a good mood, you know? Mm hmm. 
Guys, we have uh, Chloe Kim and Zoe Zadowski sin it. I always get mixed up there because I want to say it. Now, I got the reason and why. Yeah. That's your mom's maiden name. Yeah. I love that. And that's why you kept running it. Yeah, for sure. That's so cool. I mean, it's really annoying to say and really annoying to have to write down when you're filling out a form, but I love it. Yeah. Cool. And I believe your mom's watching right now live from New Zealand. No way. Yeah. Hi, mom. I don't know where your dad is. I, 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 your dad's supposed to roll the set at some point, but yeah. maybe he got a little lost. Yeah, he, he's on his best behavior. Maybe security yeah. wouldn't let him through. You know what I saw this morning, which was so cool? We have shuttle buses running to and from the hotel. Not going to say where so people don't bombard our hotel, but um, the shuttle was a little late, uh, late today, and Annika was out there, and it had been like 20 minutes, and I said something to your dad. Your dad called you, ran up, got the car keys, and then drove Annika here so she could not miss practice. Yeah. And I was like, super dad. Yeah, he has super dad. I feel everyone. like you both have super dads. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, it takes like, great parents I yeah. mean, to get to the mountain and yeah. start boarding early. I feel like anyone in your line of work, you have to have that supportive system because your parents, they're putting a lot. I mean, do they worry at all when you're like attempting these bigger tricks or are they just full? Yeah, for yeah, sure. For, for yeah. sure. And when you were younger and you were like, OK, I want to go pro, were they just like, OK, or? Yeah, full support. Full it was support. actually so insane. Like, I'm so grateful for my parents. Um, they would drive me up and down the mountain. It was like 40 minutes away in New Zealand um, and take me back down for like the last hour of school or whatever, make sure I get in just like a little bit of education. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you really, it's been really awesome to have a good support system. And mm -hmm. yeah, my parents are the best. Yeah, I feel <laughs> like my dad, my parents and I, we kind of learned together. They knew nothing about snowboarding, snow sports in general. So we kind of learned as we went. Um, so like, even when I went pro, we didn't know that like I was pro yeah. or anything. We you were didn't just even doing what you love. So we were just kind of like happy to be there, you know, mm -hmm. just like enjoying the ride. And um, it's crazy how, how far we've come, but Dad definitely gets pretty nervous when he watches me drop in every run. He's like, are you good? Are you okay? Like, does anything hurt? Do you need anything? Um, but I just love having their support, which is why I always bring them with me to every contest I go to, because it's just nice having them around, little piece of home. Mm -hmm. yeah. And they're here right now, right? Yeah, both of them. It must be so cool. I saw you post a picture. You know, both of you have billboards all over town. There's monster billboards, X Games billboards, bus billboards. I saw you take a picture. It must be so cool. It must be such a proud moment for them. And especially putting in the hard yards, you know, it, it, it's not easy to have um, to, to have a kid and, and, and be full supportive from such a young age. It's like people get to see the glorification of it, the sponsorships, these big events but pre then it was a lot of driving up and down the mountains yeah. managing school time figuring out this and i think a lot of people forget that the parents kind of devote their lives to it even your mom your mom moved to mammoth mm -hmm. yeah mom moved to mammoth my dad was still like we would all take turns with all of our different families in new jersey like doing the little usa essays and they would just take five different kids each weekend and the parents would like take turns Sick. that's awesome guys we got some new events this year um, where are we at right here? Knucklehawk for women's is in for snowboard and women's ski. Are you guys fan a fan of the Knucklehawk? Yeah. Yeah, big fan. Yeah, it's pretty crazy to watch. It's scary to watch, to be honest. Yeah. The guy that brought me from the airport to the hotel uh, was saying it's his favorite event. And I think that for a lot of people, I think, do we have to, who do we credit? We credit Marcus Cleveland. Is he the one that kind of progressed Knucklehawk? Am I wrong? I would say so, yeah. for sure. Yeah, sure. and then Zeb really put it on the map where I feel like it's a cool event where you can watch and like somebody's gonna just create something at it like in, yeah. in 30 minutes. Yeah, exactly. Like I don't see these people really practicing this as much no. or like no. just out in the normal field. Yeah. And now we're gonna start seeing people just flying off Knuckles doing like new tricks never been done. Correct, yeah, but correct me if I'm wrong and it goes back to the, the, the spectator. I think it's more relatable. Mm -hmm. Right? It's very hard to watch somebody do a 1440 and be like, hmm. I could do that. <laughs> <laughs> or somebody go, you know, eight feet helmet. out of a half pipe and go, hmm. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> and knuckle hucks, it's, and I'm not saying they can, everyday person can do the tricks that we're seeing in knuckle huck, but. Yeah, it looks oh, like I could call it. It looks like <laughs> something you may be able to do by accident, just going way too fast on the mountain. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're like, oops, whoa. But it's exciting. The fans get into it. Um, Zeb's crazy to watch. I, I, I rode by him today, rode underneath him, 
He rides like a 170. It, it looks like he's riding a longboard out there. Yeah. yeah. Every year his board gets like 20 centimeters bigger, <laughs> which makes doing those tricks a lot harder. Does it? Yeah, I think that's kind of like part of the style of, right? Like, I'm going to do really tech rail tricks on a toboggan the size of two <laughs> snowboards. Yeah. We're going we're gonna to switch uh, ships for a second, and let's talk men's snowboard slope style, and let's talk Rene, one of our family here at Monster. He's kind of the people's champ. You a fan of Rene? I love Rene. Um, I actually met him for the first time at Youth Olympics. Youth Olympics? Yes. What's a Youth Olympics? It's like baby Olympics. I think it's going down right now in, yeah. in uh, Korea, actually. Really? Yeah. So it's almost like a Junior Worlds? Yes. What Junior Worlds was? That's um, for me and Danny, man. Well, it's like the no, next right? level. So I think <laughs> mm -hmm. it's like the age group between like 14 and 16. Yeah. And all yeah. over the world. And it's like a little bit more limited, but with like the whole really cool opening ceremonies, closing ceremonies, um, and like more limited like entry field where you got to like qualify. That's so cool. Yeah. And it's going on right now? Yeah, right now. But I remember meeting Rene there for the first time, and it's so cool because I remember just being so mesmerized by his style and his writing, and it's cool that, you know, he's out here now doing the same thing at these bigger events and um, getting all that recognition that he so crazily deserves because he's so sick. Yeah, if anybody's having fun out there, more fun than anybody, it's, it's him. You know, and, and, and yeah, I get it. it. It definitely, it's a job. Um, but then you also remember where you come from and he's still that little kid that's just so stoked at any moment to, to, to be on Hill. Oh, he's just got like the biggest bag of tricks. And sometimes you don't even know where it comes from. I mean, like all of his like backside heel, like takeoffs and just, it's pretty incredible. Yeah. That, like he bounces around kind of like a rabbit having fun. Yes, yeah, so he's similar to Zeb in the fact that he can do tricks and you don't even know what it's called. Like front <laughs> one tail block, like switch front flip, back flip out. Do you know what one I'm talking about that he did? It was insane. Oh yeah, like where he like pivots and then like bounces yeah. back in. Yeah. Yeah, like he's, I mean, he's someone that I would love to go snowboarding with in like a very small park. Yeah. Not like a giant jump, even though he would ride it and it'd be fun to watch, but yeah. it's more about like what he creates on his snowboard with like out of, you know, the smallest amount. Yeah, I'm really excited to see him ride this week. I think he had last year off with an ankle injury and see him back this year, like riding the slope style course again. It's pretty exciting. Let's talk men, snowboard, slope style. It looks like practice is going on right behind us. Um, a few a few injuries there, a lot of injuries this year, but I guess that just comes with the territory, right? Um, unfortunately, Marcus Cleveland's out. Um, young Dusty Henry, Henrix is out, uh, which it, it sucks. You, you, you want to see, you want to see all these, you want to see everyone together. You want to see the field stacked yeah. and you want to see it. Sven's riding, but Sven's riding with a broken rib. Oh my god. Um, you have a lot of ribs, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's just floating around in there. Yeah. Uh. No, I'm making light of it. That's, that's definitely so a gnarly. painful bummer for sure. I Listen, saw, uh, in any sport, McMorris is here. I saw McMorris yeah, yesterday. McMorris is yeah. here. All right, here's a good one, guys. Best slope stylist rider of all time. Who's your, who's your pick? Jamie Anderson. Yeah, I'm gonna go with Jamie Anderson. Jamie, Jamie, Jamie. guys, guys. Jamie, Jamie Anderson. Jamie, yeah. Jamie. Uh, <laughs> Jamie all round. Guys, it has to be Mark for sure. Mark. I mean, I'm I gonna, got Mark. Yeah, yeah Mark. Yeah. I mean, I want to say something to be different though. You, listen, it's 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 hard. It's hard to it's hard to look past it. Yeah. Um, and 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 then you say you say that, and then you look at how difficult it is. He still never won a gold medal at the Olympics, right? And it's I, we watched him go through last year, and I watched him limp off. And but it's he for however many years now has come here and shown up or busted or almost died and then gone through rehab and come back. And he still he he innovates the sport, but that that's a testament. Like watching the last Olympics, how cold was it at that last Olympics? And that's what I don't think people really understand. You know, we were talking about off air about Niger and the Summer Olympics and 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 how hot it was in Japan, but how cold was it in it, China? It was really cold, and I even think Korea was really cold too um, in 2018. But yeah, Beijing was rough. I mean, 
you'd go outside for five minutes and your eyelashes are frozen, your hair's frozen, you just can't leave. But luckily they had a warming hut for us up top and I practically just lived there. Lived in the warming hut? Yeah, I was there all the time. Is it a little different for, obviously you want a hard icy pipe, right? Or not icy, but you want it to be. But my question is going back to jumping, landing on a hot pack ice like that really hurts, right? Yeah, it really hurts. And it's pretty hard as well. You need to like dig in your edge to land good. And when it's icy, you might not get it, you know? And this goes back to it. I think there was controversy on, it goes back to the rotations, but there was a bit of controversy on a boot grab that happened at the Olympics. Mm -hmm. We all familiar with that? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, the judges are in a tough position and it, 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 especially for slope style, how, for example, I think Rene sometimes gets underjudged. Is he getting underjudged? Why is he getting underjudged? Oh my God, that's a heavy question. Sorry. That's a hard one. I don't know. I, it's the judges for sure. Like they they make this decision at the end of the day. I can't speak for them, but I mean, it's a subjective sport, you know. Yeah. Like it's people's opinions, and I could say I thought this person should have won, but everyone else said this person should have won. You know, it's one of those things, and everyone loves watching Rene ride, and I think that's that's why we think he gets so underscored. Um, but yeah, we'll just. Have to see what happens this week. Um, I think, you know, Zoe really hit it on the head is like when you watch snowboarding, you fall in love with people's styles. And like, even when they land a run, sometimes you're like, you put 10 more points on it in your head. Yeah. Um, and I think, you know, I think the level of snowboarding truthfully has gotten so high where I don't know if the judges capability of their own riding levels was actually at that level. Whereas, like, if you've never tried any double flips on your own, how can you justify what's a harder triple? Backside, frontside, Todio triple, right? Where the level is just at, like, this insane, you know, um, technical zone where it's, like, it's kind of tricky. So you have, like, your favorite tricks, and I think they need to actually go out there and hit an airbag a little bit more. I think all of these judges should have to go to an airbag camp yeah. and try some of these triples. Yeah. Seriously, to be like, okay, and then be like, now grab in between your board. Okay, was that hard? Okay, now grab your boot and your board. All right, that was still difficult, right? So maybe don't dock it too hard. I don't know. <laughs> okay. I love your opinions. Yeah. Um, let's talk... <laughs> Uh, ben snowboard half pipe real quick. Ayumu lands his run, he wins. Is that is that where we're at, or is it, or is there? I mean, it's the level's really high. Yeah. It's Scotty's tricky, run is, you know? is, is is up there. He's created this. What are we? What, uh, what are we officially calling this like McTwist revert? He's doing. Uh, I haven't heard any names thrown around besides a Mc, switch McTwist pullback. Yeah. Would kind of be what it is. A rewind. It's sick, though. I love watching him. He was doing it last night. I was like, oh, my God. I it's don't know so how he sick. does it. Um, but Scotty is definitely, I would say, the most balanced as far as, like, spinning all directions. Mm -hmm. Where uh, Yumu is definitely one of the most technical front side and amplitude strong. So it's definitely a tough one on the judges, you know? I mean, they want to see variety, but also you got to reward whoever's going 18 feet out the whole way. And last night at practice was pretty wild to watch Ayuma's little brother, Kaiju, drop in and do like a 25 foot method. Yeah, Kaiju is on one. He's full like, send. Huge. Full send. Yeah. So fun to watch. Those guys are uh, definitely pushing the limits. And Ayumu's triple, like when he does it and pulls it off, which he does most of the time now, it doesn't, you would think, you would think it would look awkward. It doesn't at all. It actually looks stylish. Does that, does that, what I was trying to say is back in the day, I think even yourself and Sean would be judged upon your runs. Do you feel like judges are still looking at it as you're being judged by your own runs or you're being judged by what's going on in the competition, which is a tough question. I mean, I think definitely like, they're judging what's going on in that moment, for sure. Um, but it's really hard because they haven't done some of these tricks. So how do they know how hard it is? <laughs> and I think Ayumu's gotten the triple quite a few times. And now there's like this, um, I think the number factor comes in a little bit where like, okay, on paper, it's a 14. Right. But really, it's like a triple court. 
and then you see a lot of double 14s. But we all know, I mean, watching Ayuma over the last year, like there's still some more in the tank and he definitely has like an MBD that I know he wants to break out. Really? Oh yeah. I haven't heard about this. Yeah, really? Are you, are you dropping some hammers right I mean, now? I'm not saying it's like gonna happen tomorrow, but I think it could happen tomorrow. Wow. But I definitely know that um, watching him in the bag over and over again, that there's definitely a little bit more flavor to add. It's not a four flip, Dingo. <laughs> oh, so it's know. not? No. Uh, is it an, a, a McTwist revert vert? Revert? It is not. It Switch? is not. I, I mean, I don't. I'm just saying that it really doesn't matter what everyone's never been done before is, right? It's we have a night event, we have one half pipe, we have that 40 minutes, and it's like whoever pulls it out in that very moment, that's the most important time. That's a good question, actually. No, well, not a good point. You just brought up there. Three runs or jam session? Jam session. Every time? Yeah. Is that crazy? No, I don't think so in half pipe. But yeah. for slope style, I would say three runs. Yeah. For sure. I kind of love the jam sesh. It's more fun. Like, you're always moving, you know? There's no, like, waiting period. So that's kind of hard when you're just sitting up there for 20, 30 yeah. minutes waiting. But in a jam session format, at what point do you put down your run? At any point. That's the thing. It's like, if I land the first one, great. I can keep progressing, and I have so many opportunities to do something that's never been done before. I put down the best run I've ever done in my life. And like X Games is kind of the place I want to do that at, you know? I like that. Now, at judges, again, I'm not trying to rip on the judges. I hope they're not listening. <laughs> I don't want to get you in trouble, but are the judges scoring, <laughs> are they, I've seen it happen before. I've seen people come out first run and do something amazing. Are you going to get a higher score doing it first run out the gate, or are they going to say, hey, we got to see what the field's doing before we score those high scores? But apparently, the judges come a little earlier and watch practice. Oh. Apparently. So, 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 so they're not supposed to, though. Apparently, is they're not judged. supposed to. Apparently. So they're I, not supposed to. They're not, I don't think so. I think that's like a thing, though. Yeah. Because think about it. There have been times where people have put down crazy runs on their first run and just get like 97s. Yeah, well, that's yeah, definitely a room. thing, like in the judging format, like if say you're the first person to drop and you do the most ballistic run, they have to leave room in case someone does more. So at that point, like you may just get an 80 and then the rest of the field could be like fighting for what is 80 to 90. Hmm. But you're saying that it's better to do it in your last run. Not last. You're saying not first. to put it down. <laughs> I've seen If it. you're the first person to drop and you're going to lay your hammer, I'm telling you, your score is not going to be what it deserves. But I do think everybody has a safety run. You know, like, I mean, yeah. do you? You yeah. kind of put down a more mellow version of your run the first run. Get what that, we, and yeah. then... What do we call it? NBD? No. Nope. Don't... What do yeah, you... Don't... The don't do your done. NBD first run. Yeah. No. <laughs> you don't land it your first run. You could try it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Just saying. <laughs> it looks beautiful outside right now, guys. I love when the sun sets and the lights come and... Everyone, it's just like majestic. I feel like there's no other place in the world but sitting right here and watching it all unfold. I think we got some good questions, Brittany. We got, got some, some questions. Some. I'm itching to ask them. All right. So in the chat, they said, What's the next bucket list trick for Chloe and Zoe? How big is big and how crazy can crazy really get? Guys will have to tune in and find out. <laughs> Great answer. <laughs> I mean, I'm not competing yeah. this year, and I feel like I'm just going to jinx it. But, I mean, with the rate that women's snow winning is going in Big Air and Slope South, I would love to do a triple cork. That's, like, my next big trick that I would love to do. Because, um, yeah, Kokomo's put one down, Anna, Layla, um, Laurie Bluen. So, yeah, that's the dream. When are you going to start? Uh, when are you able to start training again? Um, it's looking like another, like, three weeks. Okay. But with the injury I have, it's a bit of bone bruising. So might be a little bit longer than that mm -hmm. um but i'm gonna take my time for sure because you know injuries they can linger yeah for sure okay next one any bizarre superstitions when getting ready to compete or anything that you do to get ready to compete maybe not a superstition just a prep yeah i um if i had a really good day i'll like try to replicate replicate that day on comp day um but i i'm always scared to jinx myself 
-hmm. subconsciously, so I'll always knock on my snowboard before I drop in to nice. like unjinx myself. Not yeah. superstitious, but superstitious. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> for sure. I'm kind of the same, like definitely have things that I need to do, but not really, you know, like it's just like things that happen in the moment. But um, for me, it's just breathing before I drop in for my run. I just want to be so present and like so in tune with what's going on around me. And yeah, that's what I do. Do you ever feel like an adrenaline right before you drop in? Is it so, because they asked it here if you ever feel, does it ever happen before hitting a big jump, get pent up adrenaline that doesn't subside even two hours prior to the trick? Like does your, basically they're asking if your adrenaline drops or? I don't think at X Games, I don't think it ever drops. You're yeah. just in a state of adrenaline for yep. like the whole time you're here until finals is over and you just like, yeah, you go, you go and party or you go and <laughs> to the next event and yep. yeah, yeah, you feel the come down for sure. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm with you on that one. Thank you so much, girls. We love you here at Monster Energy. We love cheering you on from afar, two of my most favorite people in the world. Get healthy and let's bring home that gold medal. Let's go. Thank you very much. Woo! Ooh.